November, a time right after spooky season and just before Christmas, a month that's most often forgotten. It's a time where the autumn season actually shows itself here in Texas, when the leaves finally start to change color in fall with cool, crisp mornings and overcast days. I think of November as a time to slow down before the rush of the holidays, a moment to take for myself, to watch old movies, cozy up with a good dark academia novel by the fireplace, and visit a nearby small town to see the goings on of life outside of the city. In today's video, I want to show you a few ways on how I like to enjoy my November, and maybe it'll spark a little inspiration in you on how to romanticize the month for yourself. So one thing I love to do during the month of November is to light a scented candle, preferably one that smells tart like cranberries or cherries, make a bitter cup of coffee, eat a sweet treat, reread a book, all while putting on an old record from my small collection. There are only a few records that I like to listen to during the month that make it even more special and nostalgic. Music that specifically reminds me of the weather getting colder, cozy nights in with my little family sitting next to the fire. I love listening to this Glenn Miller tribute record during this month. The vibes are just perfect for when I want to open up an old book and drown out all of my thoughts from the outside world. Albums like this one by the Lumineers and this one by the Mamas and the Papas are perfect during this time of year as well, especially on a cold rainy day. They just hit so hard during the month of November in a way that I can't even describe. I even like to get out the few Christmas records that I have. This Julie Andrews album can be so fun when decorating for the holidays. Although it can be a bit intense, I love it anyway, because I mean, come on, it's the one and only beautiful Queen of Genovia herself. Then we have this Love Actually album, and I actually love, love, love the soundtrack. There are so many good songs. When Joni Mitchell's Both Sides Now comes on, it brings a little tear to my eye, and the vinyl itself is just so pretty. I love that it looks like a peppermint. Ultimately though, this record by Lord Huron is actually the best to listen to this time of year. So much of the storytelling within this record takes place in nature and during winter. It makes you feel like you're all alone in the woods, soaking in all that goodness that nature brings to your soul. And honestly, I don't think there's a better record to listen to this time of year. Although, if you know of any, please leave me a suggestion in the comment section, because I would love to add on to my collection. I like to thrift for books all year long, but during this time of the year when I'm thrifting for books, I like to find those that are perfect for the upcoming freezing temperatures. That way, what I read reflects the weather and I can really take it in, which in my mind makes the season more romantic. So I look for stories that take place during the winter, books with dark academia vibes, mysteries, and thrillers. Here are a couple of books I've picked up so far this November. Set during the 1920s, the story follows Jack and Mabel, a childless older couple struggling as homesteaders in the Alaskan wilderness. When a young girl suddenly emerges from the woods, their lives begin to change. The Great War is over and jobs are scarce in the city of London. Childhood friends Tommy and Tuppence agree to start their own business as the young adventurers. They end up being hired for a job that leads them both to many dangerous situations, meeting allies, one of which includes an American millionaire in search of his cousin. I have to be honest, I've only read one Agatha Christie book and this will be my second, but I'm very excited to read this one. I picked up two Kristen Hanna books this season. I think she's such a beautiful writer and I was so excited to see that the thrift store had both of these. After the death of their father, sisters Meredith and Nina, two women who are polar opposites, must cope with their cold mother, Anya, who is exhibiting signs of dementia. This one sounds really sad, but I'm looking forward to seeing the impact that this book will have on me. 
Dr. Julia Cates was one of the leading child psychiatrists in the country, but a scandal ruined her career and made her a media target. When she receives a call from her estranged sister, Ellie, a police chief in their small hometown in Washington, she jumps at a chance to escape the drama in her own life. This book is about Mariana Andros, a 36-year-old widow, lifelong book lover, and a group therapist who travels to Cambridge to investigate the murder of her niece, Zoe's friend. I actually started this on audiobook and decided I'd rather read it physically. It has a perfect Dark Academia vibe. And then I really just wanted to show you the set of Harry Potter books that I picked up. I finally got my hands on these beautiful editions by Mina Lima. If you've been following me for a while, you know how much I love this design firm. They pretty much created the whole look of the films, so I was very excited to find these. I bought them in a pack of two and can't wait to add the rest when I find them. were giving a party. It never rained on the night. The boat goes at noon. Good night. Good night. When I think of a cozy November day, I think of curling up into bed with a big cup of hot cocoa, a whole bunch of marshmallows, and watching my most comforting TV shows and movies. Some that give me feelings of warmth, and some that give me a good cry when I'm long overdue for one. I like to call these my in-between shows. Movies and TV shows that feel cozy or might take place within the holiday season, but aren't necessarily Christmas. And then there are a few that just feel right to watch in November with no real reason other than they fit my mood during this particular time. Draper has plenty of booze. Yes. Please, I guess. And you get to meet Jimmy Barrett. We'll drive into town together. It's not different. It's exactly the same. So there are quite a few little towns around our big city that are just so cute and quaint, many with beautiful Victorian mansions, 
and whenever I have a free weekend, which is usually during the month of November, I like to take a little day trip and walk through those neighborhoods. I like wondering what it would be like to live in a small town. I figure the more I put myself in those places, the more likely I am to build up the courage to one day leave the big city for this lifestyle. And seeing these places during the autumn months just makes it even better for me. 